well. John? Thank you, Harvey. Um, I, it is humbling to be in this room um, with all of you and people who have dedicated um, so uh, much of your lives to uh, improving the health of your communities um, and thinking about the challenges that the nation faces. Um, and I want to acknowledge Faith uh, for and her team for uh, organizing this event and um, having a uh, an immediate understanding of what we're trying to do and the size and scope um, and some would say audacity of what we're really um, attempting to do with a healthy America. And so it is, it, it truly is humbling to, to be here and to have um, the, the, the breadth of experience being brought together, both in the room um, and on the web. And I, I also want to acknowledge um, our uh, Harvey um, and the team at the IOM that we have the privilege of working with. Um, so Claire, Rose, Clyde, to really be there um, and others to really support us and make this the collaboration um, that we've uh, really come to um, enjoy and, and respect. Um, we also have um, with us virtually um, the first supporters of A Healthy America, um, the George Family Foundation, Gail Ober, uh, you'll be hearing from her, and Tony Eiten from the California Endowment. And so they're, they're listening, but I want to acknowledge um, their uh, first support that has come into A Healthy America that's enabling us to even have these kinds of meetings with you today. Um, but you'll be hearing from them. Um, I think it's important for me to, I, I don't need to um, set the scene. Um, Harvey has done that so well in terms of the need for a campaign like a healthy America, the starting of a movement, I should say, like a healthy America and creating this culture of health that Harvey speaks so well about. Um, I think maybe it's important for you to have a, a little bit more of a sense of who I am and the experience that I've, I've gained in, uh, over the past uh, many years of my career to communicate about health. Um, it started a long time ago when I, uh, with the support of the Ford Foundation, produced the first nationally broadcast HIV information um, special for public television. It was called AIDS Changing the Rules, and it had Ron Reagan Jr. as the host. And that was the first nationally broadcast film to try to impact uh, people's safe sex behaviors. Um, skipping forward, I was brought into HBO to um, produce an anti-tobacco campaign for youth, both dealing with cigarettes and smokeless tobacco. It was called Smoke Alarm. And uh, then soon thereafter, I was asked to produce a series on addiction and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation with Victor Kaposha, who's in the room as my program officer. Um, I have a little show and tell. I can pass this around the room. But um, addiction uh, with the support of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation um, was really the first uh, national effort to bring together um, a network of the size and power of HBO and a partnership with the NIH. And it was the first time the NIH was a producer of content along with an entertainment company. And so there's a really remarkable experience working with NIH. And this received the Governor's Award, which is the highest award um, from the Television Academy that you can receive. Um, and after that, and that was a very hard um, topic to wrestle to the ground. It took three years to make addiction. Um, after that, I was asked to take on Alzheimer's. And I, um, in 2009, and Alexandra Moss, Ali Moss, who's in the room, um, was the associate producer of that and co-author of the book that went along with this. And this was uh, the executive producer, Maria Shriver, of the Alzheimer's Project. Thank you, Megan. Um, and this, with, this had the support of uh, Fidelity Charitable Gift Fund um, and the Alzheimer's Association. Jeffrey Bean gives back. And with addiction, Victor taught us a lot about community engagement. And uh, what Victor and RWJF wanted to do with addiction um, was really help organize um, viewing parties in people's homes to create the materials and to create a coalition of organizations where there is not one affinity group like a, you know, a, a Diabetes Association or American Heart for addiction. And so it was Victor's insight to create a coalition of partners who could approximate the, the, the power of uh, a, an organization 
like an American Heart Association. Um, but we learned and we took the, the skills that Victor helped us gain um, with the Alzheimer's Project and uh, produced a screening kit. And with the philanthropic support, um, what um, is being passed around the room is a screening kit that went to 6,000 community-based community -based organizations free of charge. And that was a very powerful experience to get that kind of content out. And the viewership was extremely high of the Alzheimer's Project. Um, and uh, we, uh, it's estimated that there was over a billion media impressions for that campaign. Um, and again, that was a co-presentation with the NIH. And it was tackling a, uh, a brain disease, two projects that are dealing with uh, a brain disease, and helping people understand the advances in science that are really trying to uh, help us either wrestle to the ground the struggles uh, of the addict or prevent the development of the disease. Um, in 2000, after that aired in 2009, we decided um, to tackle obesity. And I just assumed going into that, that I would work with the NIH again. Um, and they would be our partner and I would help people understand the advances uh, that were happening either in the laboratory or the clinic um, to tackle this problem. And that was a very naive view. Um, I soon came to understand um, that the problems of obesity are far more complex. And uh, that led to my discussions uh, with the IOM and getting to know Harvey and Judy Salerno. Um, and the uh, reports of the IOM changed my life. Um, and they really helped me understand the place that the IOM plays um, in society, in our culture, um, and the uh, importance of bringing together many, many um, disciplines into the room to really uh, tackle the issues, um, particularly in childhood obesity that they had been looking at for a number of years, and to come up with some very courageous recommendations. Um, and I really came to understand the role of the IOM in having um, that kind of fearlessness. And that was a good partner to have, uh, is the right partner to have. Um, and so um, The Way to the Nation is a co-presentation between HBO and the Institute of Medicine in partnership with the NIH and the CDC, the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation, and Kaiser Permanente. And where there were 6,000 Alzheimer's kits, there are 40,000 of these screening kits that have gone out free of charge and 20,000 of the way to the nation for kids. So I'll pass this around. Um, this kind of support that we were able to get um, has um, brought the way to the nation, I, I think, um, into the home and the conversations that are happening in the home, in the workplace, in the schools. That was our aim. Um, and I, I'm very proud of that project. Ali um, was the co-producer on The Way to the Nation, co-author of the book again, and John Barden, um, who is here also from uh, the Public Good Projects, is a science journalist, he's a neuroscientist, um, and has come to really recognize the power of media and uh, has been a, a fundamental part of all the thinking that's gone on, um, Ali, John, myself, Harvey, and everyone from the IOM, in putting together uh, what you've been reading about um, for a healthy America. Um, the genesis of a healthy America um, came from my feeling at the end of these three projects, 10 years of my career, um, that the, uh, the problems of chronic disease in this country that I'd come to understand in making the way to the nation, because if you're going to deal with obesity, you're going to come to understand chronic disease that the problems of chronic disease are, are so tremendous, um, so seemingly intractable, um, and only increasing. And the, uh, we, Harvey talks about the unsustainability of that. Um, the magnitude of that challenge to us as a nation is something that um, we were only able to um, touch on in the way of the nation amongst all the other topics that we were taking on. And I also had the... Um, sort of ability to sit back at the end of that project and reflect on the 10 years of work that I'd done 
of creating events and, and controlling the conversation for moments in time in the culture um, by having such a powerful media platform. Um, that, uh, is that model, <clears throat> when it comes to chronic disease, is that the right model? Is it enough? Um, and I, I, I thought of the notion of a, of a helicopter coming in um, to a crisis situation and the sense of a dust storm being thrown up and everybody seeing the dust come running, looking, something is up, they pay attention. This, this, this machine, this, the noise, it has seized everyone's attention. But eventually, um, and what most likely happens is that the helicopter takes off and the dust settles back down and people go back to their ways. Um, or the helicopter runs out of gas because it's not continuously fueled to keep that dust storm going um, and to keep, in a sense, that, that mission alive. And so that has led to us really looking to, to form a new model for a healthy America, to see it uh, if we really, if cultural change is our goal, um, we have to really create a, uh, a permanent thread in the American culture of health promoting content, a permanent thread that, that shapes the conversations that are happening in the home, in the churches, in the schools, in the workplace, in local government, in state government, in federal government, at all levels to create a, a ubiquity uh, with our messaging that really compels people to really change these conversations and that we adapt over time. As those conversations are changing, we adapt to helpfully use media to as its fullest effect to try to advance um, the culture towards a healthier place. We have a video that we hope captures um, a sense of this. This is um, to really, uh, it, you know, we call these things teasers or sizzle reels. Um, it's a, just a very brief video that we thought this would be a good time to show um, to give you just a sense of what our, uh, of our ambition is with a healthy America. I think we should turn the lights out if we could. 